Tulane University, Tulane, uh, University of North Carolina, and probably uh, where he's most known for is University of Texas from 1998 to 2013. Um, Coach Brown is a national champion, the 2005 team, winning the Rose Bowl in uh, 2006, one of the most famous college football games of all time. They beat uh, University of Southern California. Um, 20 consecutive win seasons, 17 consecutive bowl appearances. From, 20, uh, from 2000 to 2010, spent 169 of 192 uh, weeks in the coaches football top 25. Um, he's mentored coaches such as Will Miss, Miss Champ, Greg Robinson, Gene Chizik, Joe Feldman, among many, many, many others. Um, he most recently was uh, inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, and he currently uh, is an analyst for ESPN. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Brown. I, uh, I start by saying congratulations to you students that are here on Friday afternoon, because that's unusual. So I, I appreciate you and, and what you do when you take a step to go beyond where all the other students are, wherever they are drinking this afternoon. Um, it, it gives you a, a step up. So uh, don't take that for granted. Anytime you have an opportunity to sit and listen to a superstar like Dr. Ivy, use it because you need that knowledge. What we did is, uh, Coach Nealon has been so good to all of us that he taught us so much, we learned from him so much. He's classy, he's smart, he always did it the right way, and he won, and he always gave back to us. So I appreciate you, Coach, love you, Coach, and, and uh, I came because of you. I can promise you that because you mean so much to me and, and my family, and you've done so much not only for this place, but for uh, college sports, and, and you always did it the right way. We appreciate it. Um, and the other thing I would say, Valerie, Christina, um, guy, you guys have been great. So thank you for putting this on. And, and and I'll be brief. I've got two or three things that I think are really important. As you look at college football right now, you when I started back in North Carolina in 1988, you had five to seven years to build your program. Now you got three. So if you're going to work with football coaches in general, uh, they're going to need for you, to, as Dr. Ivey said, to show them some immediate results. What can you do to help them? Because I don't have very long. So now they're offering freshmen in high school uh, recruiting. When you get your recruits in, you usually hit on about 50% of your recruits. If you're playing like West Virginia is in the Big 12, then you've got teams that are running 90, 100 plays a game, so you've got to have depth. So. The key to that coaching to, to get one of these, I brought this for you. You got good hands? Good hands, that's good. Catch it. Pass the national championship ring so everybody can see it. Uh, and I've never lost it, so get it back to me, please. Uh, I don't want to say West Virginia is the only place that stole my ring. So I don't, want, I don't want to do that as we get through. But those are hard to get. And to do that, you've got to have everybody involved on the team. It's got to work. So what we looked at early is how do we get the best development for our players? How do we get our guys bigger, stronger, and faster after we get them there? How do we get them more flexible? And how do we get them to play at maximum speed and, and strength and stay healthy? Because if you're a healthy team, if you're good enough and healthy, you got a chance to get one of those rings. If not, you lose a lot of players. We lost 15 starters my last year as a head coach. 15. And it was just freakish that it happened. It had nothing to do with anything that we were doing except we had lost our edge and recruiting and didn't have as much depth, in, in my opinion. So when you start looking at that and, and you go back and look for people on your campus like you all that are on the cutting edge of nutrition, strength, stretching, and so forth to give you an advantage over other schools. I remember early, there was a, a young man on our team named Leonard Davis who played for the Cowboys. He was six foot eight, and listen to me now, he was 383 pounds. I used to say he was 283 pounds because I couldn't fathom him being 383 pounds, so I'd never get it right. I'd say he's 283 pounds, I'd say, Coach, he's 383 pounds. And, and we actually nearly killed him one day in the off-season program because he was too big, we thought, and we were trying to get him to lose weight. What we didn't understand is he didn't need to lose weight, he needed to get in shape. 
So we were wrong, and they put him back in an ice to him the hospital, and, and we had to keep him alive until we got people like Dr. Ivy involved, and we found out that uh, what, what we were looking at was wrong. We need to look at body composition, not how big he was. He was that big, and he could play that big. And we needed to embrace him being that big and, and not have him eating lettuce. Because he wouldn't even eat it anyway. Literally like barbecue, he liked uh, the good stuff that a good Texas guy likes. But he could play at, two, at 300, excuse me, and 83 pounds. And we absolutely nearly killed him because of our ignorance of body composition. So uh, we got with uh, Dr. Ivy and his group. And you, you all know these things. We started uh, skin calipers. We started hydro static weight, the bod pod, the dexa scan bone density, and we would actually text our kids as soon as they would get those results. And I, I talked to the, the staff at, at West Virginia today. We took pictures of kids when they got there, and then we would take a picture after the first six months, after the first year, and such to let them see how much improvement they made. And then they started eating right because they liked the results. But you've got to show them some results before it'll work. And all of these things happen for us in, in a positive way. The doc also tested because it's really hot in Texas. And we were trying to figure out how do we have two a day practices in 107 degree heat and not kill them? And do you get them in shape or do you wear them out? And there's a fine line between the two. Our first three or four years there, we were playing really poorly at the first of the, the season, and I thought we were out of shape. In essence, we were exhausted. They were tired because we'd had them out in the heat too long. So we actually went to Dr. Ivy, we went to the Saints, we went to the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, we went to Houston Texans, we went to people who were training in the heat and asked them what they would do, and they actually told us, keep them out in the, the heat for an hour and take them inside your indoor area for an hour. They told us the last 10 days before the first game, keep them indoors. They're already in shape. So what you need to do is get their legs back. You need to be fresh when you play. And one of the things we always prided ourselves, we played in 20 something bowls, we always prided ourselves to be a better team at the end of the year and more fresh at the end of the year than we were at the beginning of the year. Even when we, uh, uh, we lost a couple of bowl games, I tried to find out who was winning the most bowl games. It was Bobby Bowden and the, uh, Florida State, and it was uh, Wisconsin, Barry Alvarez. So I actually got on the plane, I went to see Coach Bowden, and I said, I know you got good players, but tell me why you're winning all the bowl games and other rest of us. I went to Wisconsin, I said, I'm a Barry, and I said, you're winning all the bowl games. How are you doing that? And both of them said the same thing. They said that what we do is while we're at home, we're going to have like two of days. We're going to work the guys really, really hard. They're going to have a short break to go home for Christmas. And then at the bowl game, we're going to do absolutely nothing but review and stretch and make sure we're fresh for the ball game. Because at the bowl games, too many people are walking around. You don't have your routine. You don't have your sleep. And the freshest team at the bowl game wins. And I, I think we won seven out of eight after that because we were more fresh in the fourth quarter than the other teams, and it just made sense for us. So when we started looking at hydration, because we had kids with cramps, and then they'd have the cramp, they'd pull a hamstring, uh, and, and heat was such an issue for us in early ball games. We went to Doc, and he, he started testing for VO2 max, sweat levels, hydration levels, uh, which would help us prevent the cramping and the muscle strains and the pulls. If you pull a hamstring early, you might be done for the year. Because it's hard to practice and stay in shape with a hamstring pull. So it could cost you for the entire year. You check fluid levels, the electrolyte protocol. With a lot of the kids, modern day, there were some kids that were dropping and they were dying because they had a sickle cell trait. We didn't know that. Dr. Ivy got with our guys and we started testing that to, for every player when they would show up in Texas. And we would know who had the sickle cell trait. You had to watch them more carefully. You had to test them uh, out on the field to, to, to check their heat levels. And you had to pull them out. You just pulled them out of practice early. And we had some great players that couldn't play early in the season as much as the other kids. And we needed to know that. The assistant coach had to know you can't push the guy beyond where he is or, or uh, he sure wouldn't be a good player, but he also might die. And then you had to go back and, and try to figure out recovery. 
How hard could you push and then get them to recover it and restore their, their legs and their energy? Uh, Doc mentioned uh, nutrient timing before, and, and he is the one that started these protein shakes, and, and he's the one that started getting nuts and fruits and, and different things in the uh, in the weight rooms across the country because no no coach everybody thought that was too soft and and when we started the uh, uh, protein smoothies people even started laughing at us about they're giving these kids smoothies they're soft uh, and it was absolutely about nutrition and then doc uh, even started the, the snacks because eating differently and at different times of the day were very important. He started with certain kids having protein shakes an hour before ball games, which would give them a little bit more that they could eat. I remember we played Brigham Young one night in our, our last year at, at Texas, and there was an hour and 45 minute delay, and we were in the dressing room. We kept them in their uniforms, it was hot, we didn't feed them, and we stunk. We absolutely stunk in the ball game. Five weeks, six weeks later, we played at TCU. There's a three hour and 15 minute delay. And we took all their clothes off, we had them shower, we fed them, uh, we had them get their music, we had them get relaxed, we had them restretch, and we won the game 30 to six. So there's so many things that you and your careers will be able to help your football program with if you can just bring it to them and convince your head coach that you're gonna help him win. Because that's all he's going to want. He's going to want your trust. Dr. Ivy never, ever gave any information in my 16 years out about any of our players, except to us. And the paranoia with coaches is I don't need on the streets that so-and-so is too heavy. I don't need the, on the streets that this kid's got the sickle cell trait. We don't need that out. So you have to have complete trust in, in the people that you're talking to. Doc also helped us with uh, uh, how to feed our guys with uh, pre-practice, uh, with workouts, uh, and he actually started the pre-game meal and taught us to move it back four hours before the game and what to eat. And all of those things are very, very important as you go to it. And, and the other thing that he did is, is in my time at Texas, he actually talked the Lost Dodds, our athletics director, into getting us a nutritionist, Amy Cole. And she's really smart, she was really good. She was kind of a part-time person. We got her full-time, and, and now there's five full-time nutritionists uh, in the Texas Athletic Department, and it does make a difference. And it, uh, it, it can win football games. So uh, when you start looking at your job in this department as it compares to uh, major college football programs like a West Virginia, like a Texas, um, as Doc said, number one, you got to gain trust. Number two, you got to have a plan and convince the head coach uh, that you're worth it. You're going to help him win football games and tell him why, and then show him why, and, and then follow through with it and, and be part of the team. And, and I think that's the most important thing for us. So um, we wouldn't have won the national championship, in, in my estimation, near as easily unless we'd had Dr. Ivy and our kinesiology department uh, involved and on board. Uh, and they were part of the family and part of the team, and, and it, it made sense for us. They're right there, and they cared. They wanted to win. And that's the other thing. You, you've got to pull for your group and your team. You don't want somebody around that care whether you win or not. It is important that you win. And, and that is the, the bottom line. You want to treat guys right. You want to do everything right. but. For it to work, you have to win, and, and, and for you to stay in the, in the long term. We even had uh, Jeff Madden and, and Benny Wiley were very good friends and, and very respectful of Dr. Ivy, uh, but we had a, a guy who donated all the money for our weight room who was from Saudi Arabia named Dr. Rashid. He's worth $8 billion, and, and he came in and said, uh, uh, give what you want. Well, that was a mistake because uh, we nearly spent the $8 billion, I think. He <laughs> said we had an unlimited budget, we went over it. Um, but what Dr. Rashid did, because Dr. Ivy and his group were so important in our progress at the University of Texas, Dr. Rashid actually gave three scholarships uh, in mine and Sally's name to the kinesiology department because they were that important to us. So uh, you can't just talk about it. You can't say you're going to do it. You've got to step up and do it right if it's going to work. Got it?